Yeah. Hello? So I've started. Okay, so you have to switch chat. Hello? Before you need to let it in. Okay. Before I won't come, you see the notification. Okay. Yes. Okay. Hello, Pastor Macaulay. Man of God. I celebrate you, sir. We thank God. You. <laughs> I, mean, I want to miss this class. <laughs> well done, sir. <laughs> I just found wow. We bless God. Your heart is fine. <laughs> great, great. We give God praise. Well done, sir. Yeah, so. Yeah, um, we have sex. Great, great. I uh, just want to, some people said they just need to connect. I'm just waiting. You can give them one minute for people to connect. Uh, no problem. No problem. Well done, sir. No problem. I will, I will mute myself so All that right. I can and off my video so I can enjoy the class. All right, sir. Welcome, Anyela. It's great to have you. I'm All right, so we're just going to wait for about a minute. Some people are still trying to join. Uh, we will start the session um, as soon as um, we have some number with us. Welcome, Enyela, I see you. It's great to have you here. Um, okay. So please feel free to mute your mic as you join. All right. So I think we will start at uh, in another one minute. Thank you. Welcome. Welcome. You're welcome once again. Grace, I see you. Great to have you here. You're welcome. Great to have you with us. Okay. So just responding to some people on WhatsApp, just a few minutes while I just give them directions again. All right, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, all right. Okay, I think we can, we can get going now. Let's just share a quick word of prayer. Father, we give you praise, we thank you for Today we bless you because you are with us. Thank you because you have kept us all through the beginning of the year, through this coronavirus epidemic, you have kept us safe and sound. We bless you because you are you're the one who looks after us and we thank you for that. Father, we thank you for this session. As we go into your word, we ask that you speak to us, speak to our hearts, Speak to every one of us that we will learn from your presence in Jesus' name. Help us to be better believers. Help us to be doers of your word. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. All right. So um, 
just admitting a few people. All right. Great, so you're welcome. You're welcome if you're just joining us, welcome. Um, please feel free to, to say hello to everyone. You can also uh, feel free to mute so that we can get started. All right, so um, before we get going, I want to crave the audience to, um, this, this session is supposed to last for one hour, but this free session is 30 minutes. So at the end of this session, we will just please be logging again so that we can. Uh, we can All right. Praise the Lord. Okay, so um, we're going to get started. Please feel free to mute if you are um, in the place where there is a bit of feedback. Praise the Lord. Okay, so, okay, so praise the Lord. Um, can you unmute and just let us know that you are with us? If you are with us, let's uh, let's just mute for a second and say hello so we know who those of us who are, you know, with us. Hello. Hi, Grace or by Hello. 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 I'm Pastor Shee Makoli. Thank you, Pastor Shee Makoli. Thank you, Grace. Who else is there? Um, Hello, Lord. this is Aramide. Oh, hi, Aramide. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, Carl. Grace Kanu. Grace or by Hi, Grace or by Good to see you. Very, very good to see you. Hello. Hello. Okay, I can see Mudupa. Hi, this is Anyola. Hi, Anyola. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah. Uh, pardon me, my wife is just uh, putting me through, so you may see her. Yes. Okay, so uh, we're going to go into it right away. Like I said, this session is going to last for 30 minutes. And at the end of 30 minutes, when they prompt us, please we log back in because we're going to do another 30 minutes um, before we are done for today. It is my belief and my prayer that God will speak to every one of us and we will learn from his feet in Jesus' name. All right, so please mute your mic. Um, if you need to, um make a comment please go to the chat and make a comment or raise uh, you can raise your hand uh, there's a place for um if you have any questions or anything you want to add you can just make your comments in the chat section okay all right so um i'm going to share my screen now so that we can look at um This is what I want us to start with. All right, uh, before we start, I want us to all make sure we have our notepad and our pen with us. Uh, please ensure that you have your notepad and your pen with you so that you can take notes. And if you need to ask any questions, you can jot your questions down before, so that when it's time, you can ask your question. This session is, um, Daniel's 70th week. Daniel was um, a prophet. The prophet is one of the prophets in the Bible in the Old Testament. And so this, this prophecy is called Daniel's 70th week because it was given to Daniel. And this prophecy is contained in the book of Daniel chapter 9. So let us turn our Bibles quickly to Daniel chapter 9. Daniel chapter 9, we'll read from verse 24 to 27. I'll read without um, breaking. Daniel 9, verse 24. That 70 weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. 25. 
Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The street shall be built again and the wall, even in troublous times. And after, that's verse 26, and after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end thereof shall be with a flood, and unto the end of the war, desolations are determined. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, in verse 27. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations, he shall make it desolate, even until the consummation even until the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. Praise the Lord. So this is the four verses that capture this prophecy of Daniel's 70th week. He says, Daniel seven, telling Daniel, 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. Whose people are those? Those are the Israelites. Those are the, the Jews. So this prophecy relates directly to the Jews. Okay? It shows us, it shows us exactly who this prophecy relates to. It relates to the Jews specifically, because we're talking about Daniel's people, and upon the holy city, which city is talking about Jerusalem. So this prophecy. The scope of this prophecy deals with, with Israel and with Jerusalem. Now, he says that 70 weeks are determined. Now, let us, to, to understand why this, this 70 weeks is uh, not a literal 70 weeks of seven days. It is actually, um, the week here represents a year because it's a week of seven things. A week is seven days or you know, so in this case, we go and look at, if you look at chapter, uh, verse 1 of chapter 9, you see an example of this. It says in the first year of Darius, this same chapter 9, in the first year of Darius, the son of Ahasuerus, of the seed of the Medes, which was made king over the realm of the Chaldeans. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the number of the years. So this prophecy really relates to years. Whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah the prophet that he would accomplish 70 years in the desolations of Jerusalem. So when we see 70 weeks here, it is a week of years. That is, each week represents seven years. Okay? Now, it says 70 weeks are determined upon thy people. That means we have 70 times 7, which is 490 years. So this prophecy specifically, this Daniel 7th week prophecy covers 70, uh, 490 years, okay? He says this 70, this 490 years are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city. What, now he's going to list seven things that have to happen in these 490 years. He says to finish the transgression. So I need to add somebody in, okay? Welcome, um, Sister Amarachi, good to see you. He says, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity, to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal up the vision, and to seal up the vision and prophecy, I separated these two into two, to seal up the vision and to seal up the prophecy, and to anoint the most holy. So by the end of these 490 years, Seven things need to have been accomplished. And all these seven things we are seeing, they are finalities. They are conclusions and completions. So this is telling us that this is the, um, the, the, the end of the journey for Israel. This is where God is going to take them to. At the end of 490 years, God is saying, I'm going to be done with the children of Israel. I would have finished everything that I need to do with the children of Israel. Now, when does this 490 years start? 
is important because understanding, understanding this is important for us in this end time because it gives us insight into the, the calendar, so to say, of the end time, how we can prepare for the return of the Lord and who will be the major players at the end of time. Praise the Lord. So what will be the commencement of this 490 years? Sorry, I'm adding somebody else into the group. You're welcome, Brother Mike. Good to see you. Know therefore and understand, in verse 25, it tells us that from the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem, this is when the 490 years begins to count. Now, this is not all the history of Israel, but at a certain point, God says that I'm going to start the end to, to complete the work that I have done with Israel when I chose Israel. Hello, can we hear me? I'm getting some feedback. Can you hear me? Please mute your phone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? There's an obstruction in the background. Okay. Uh, can we unmute our mic and see whether that will perfect, uh, solve the problem? Okay. Let me let me continue and hope that that will that will, that will go off eventually. Okay. Can we mute our mic, please? But the mic, I see you. Good to see you. Can you mute? I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Brother Mike, can you hear me? The background noise is so loud. It's, it's overshadowing your voice. Yes, okay, so it's gone now. I think it's gone. Praise the Lord. Let's keep on. So he's saying that this 490 years that God is going to complete his interaction with the children of Israel is going to start counting from the time that the instruction, the commencement of the rebuilding of Jerusalem started. We see that in Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1. If you check very quickly, Nehemiah chapter 8, verse 1, this was in the, in the reign of, during the reign of Artaxerxes. It was the, it says, sorry, is it uh, Nehemiah? I'm looking at Nehemiah. So the 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 four hundred. This instruction comes, verse twenty five in Nehemiah chapter two verse one. Did I say eight? My bad. Sorry. Is Nehemiah two verse one? It says that it came to pass in the month Nisan in the twentieth year of Artaxerxes the king. So this instruction was given by Artaxerxes the king. You remember Nehemiah was sad in his presence. And he said, why are you sad? And he said, because of the ruins of my, of my people. And I need an instruction to go and rebuild. But so you need to give me that instruction. And the king gave him the instruction, you know, and got help for them to give him cedars and all of that. So this instruction to rebuild Jerusalem is when the 490 years began. Now, history helps us. History helps us with that date. History tells us that that date, the date that he gave that instruction was in April 14, 445 BC. That is what history tells us. So for this one, we don't need to struggle too much. Historians have given us the date when King Ataxerxes made this declaration. All right, praise God. So now, 490 years, when we count forward, it's supposed to land us somewhere in um, 40 something AD, uh, 70 something AD. Now, there's a reason why the Bible divi divides this 490 years into three portions. In verse 25, it tells us there'll be a first seven week portion followed by followed by a 62-week session before the Messiah comes. So I'm going to share my screen now so that you can see uh, 
so that I'm, I want to see how we can see what I'm trying to share with us. I want to share the Okay. So now, can you see my screen? Can anybody see my screen? Are you seeing my screen? Is it the slides you're sharing? The slides, yes. Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So if you look closely at this slide, slide one here, there is a, a timeline. This black line you're seeing is a timeline. Okay, this black line you are seeing is a timeline, and before you, the, the cross you are seeing is the cross of Jesus Christ. This is representing the, the coming of Christ, the first coming of Christ. Now it says that from the commandment to build, the, 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 to rebuild until the Messiah will be 69 weeks. Okay, it doesn't say 70, it says 69 weeks, so seven weeks plus 62 weeks comes to 69 weeks. So the cross, everything you are seeing here before the cross, is where the 69 weeks come in and end, end. Okay? Now, after 69 weeks, the Messiah will be cut off, but not for himself. Another prince is going to rise up after the 69 weeks. After the, the six, two weeks, following the seven weeks, the first seven weeks, Messiah will be cut off, and then, the, the, but not for himself, the people of the prince that shall come, the people of the prince that shall come. So another prince, another prince is going to come. Okay, but notice that this prince is in lower case. So it's a different person than Messiah the prince that came initially. Okay, so I'm seeing some people raising hands. Um, please feel free to put your comments or questions in the chat, in the chat box. Okay, um, so that we can make time. I want to get, try and get as, as far as I can so that we can get to a point and then take some questions. So now there is a small gap. There's a small gap between the 69th week and the 70th week, okay? Normally, we would say that the, 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 the 69, the 70 weeks should flow chronologically, but something happens at the 69th week when the Messiah is cut off. Now, I will show us a little later in this, in this, teaching, in this teaching how, I, I see you, Brother Beniza, I will, um, please put your question in the comments section so that I can address it a bit later. Okay, thank you. So now, this, 16, this 69th week, because there is a breakage, the, the Messiah was cut off. It, the Messiah was supposed to um, have come to the Israelites and re be received by them, and they would have, this whole, the, the 70th week would have continued unbroken. But the Messiah was cut off. The Bible says in John 1, that he came unto his own, and his own received him not. So his own that was here, that, 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 the, that are the Israelites, they rejected him until today, the Israelites are waiting for the Messiah. So because of that, because of that breakage, the, 60, the 70th week does, did not follow the 69th week. There was a pause. And that pause is where we are today. If we look at the coming of Christ on the cross in this slide, we see that the we see that it is followed by what we call the church age before we get to Daniel 70th week. Can we see it? For those who are on audio, I want to believe you can see also. Um, I, the, the, so now between the, the, the coming or the taking away of Jesus Christ and Daniel 70th week, there's a time space which has been filled by God with what we are currently in now, the church age. The church age is God reaching out to the Gentiles after being rejected by his, by, by his own people. 
So the the taking away of Christ led to the advent of the church age that we are in now, and the church age is going to end at when the as soon as the church age ends, the seventieth week will commence. Now, if you read in Romans eleven, you will see what we are talking about here. When when Paul was talking about the salvation of Israel, the nation Israel now, the nation Israel, okay? He says in chapter one, verse one of the chapter 11, I say then, has God cast away his people? God forbid. So the, the, God has not cast away anybody. His, his, the children of Israel are still in God's plan, all right? That means that there is still a perfection that is going to come. The perfection that was referred to in, chapter, in verse 24 of chapter 9, those seven things are still going to happen to Israel. Remember that this chapter, this prophecy is not referring to Jews, I mean to the Gentiles. It's referring specifically to the Jews. So these seven things have not yet happened. And Paul is asking this question, has God cast away his people? No, he has not, he says, God forbid. All right, and in that chapter, he continues to make that case that God did not cast them off. But you see in verse, in verse 11, he says, I say then, have they stumbled? Or maybe we should look for the part where he says we are grafted in. Okay, if in verse 16, for if the first fruit be holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. If some of the branches are broken off, okay? So Paul is referring to the plan of God. If some of the branches are broken off, thou have been a wild olive, we are grafted in among them. So the church age is a, is a parenthesis, is a, is a parenthesis, all right? It's a, it, it, it's a, it's a stopgap. God inserted the, the, the church age between the 69th week and the 70th week. Now the church age was is God's plan of redemption for the world, for the rest of the world. God, God has always dealt with one nation prior to the church age. God has dealt with only the nation of Israel. And the nation of Israel has always been the, 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 the people of God. But at the heart of the 69th week, God expanded his view to the Gentiles. The Bible says that in Galatians, Paul was talking to Peter, talking about Peter, that the ministry to the Jews was given to Peter, but the ministry to the Gentiles was given to, to him. So God started to reach out to the Gentiles in the, in, the, in, the, in the church age. Okay? So every one of us that are saved now in this period, regardless of nationality, that means even a person who has a, an Israeli passport can become a part of the church age now because God has paused his interaction with the nation of Israel and is now dealing with spiritual Israel to create a people. Now, understand something that in verse 17 of chapter 11, it says that some of the branches were broken up. That means that Israel is only a part of the branch. They are only a part of the tree. The Gentiles are the second part of the tree. So God never intended that only Israel was going to be saved. God always kept the path for the non-Israelites. All right? So some of, the, some of the trees, some of the branches were broken up, and then you were brought in in their place. So we both, the, the natural, the, the, the nation of Israel and the spiritual Israel will make up that tree. Praise the Lord. So let's, let's quickly move on. So now, at the end of the church age, at the end of the church age, we're going to find that the 70th week is ushered in. Now, what will usher in the 70th week is going to be the rapture. The rapture is going to happen at the end of the church age. And everybody who believes in Jesus Christ, who has accepted Christ right now, the Bible says, we who are aliens from the commonwealth of Israel have now been made nigh by the blood of Jesus Christ. So we will now become a part of this 
nation. All right. For those who are just joining us, I said that the, the session is going to end very shortly. But please re-log back in because we have another 30 minutes to continue after this. This is a one hour session. So the session is going to end any minute now. But please log back in almost immediately so that we can continue uh, this, this session. All right. Now let us know as soon as the session is over. Praise the Lord. So now we have the church age where the Holy Spirit comes in. The Holy Spirit is now the administrator of the church age. The, the, in the previous time, it was God the Father that was relating to, to the world. But now the, the Jesus Christ came physically to usher in the ministry of the Holy Spirit and to open the church age. Now the church age has come in and every one of us that belongs in that church age will make it in the rapture. The rapture is going to happen and all of us will be taken away from this earth. Now, one of the things that Jesus Christ said when he was living is that you will be witnesses. Now, take note of the word witnesses, very important. He says you will be witnesses to me, both in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the uttermost part of the earth. So the church is God's witness. God has always left himself a witness. He has never been without a witness. So the church is God's witness in the church age. We are the ones that speak to the world about Jesus Christ. We are the ones that speak to God, to the world about King, about heaven, about the things that are going to be. It is, God is using the church. But there is going to come a time that the church will be taken up. The arrow you see up on that slide is the church. Okay, so, great. So, um, we, it seems that they said we've removed the 40 minute limit so we can continue. Looks like we can continue, praise God. So, now the rapture is gonna happen and all the members of the church, now spiritual Israel, spiritual Israel is going to leave there. They are going to, it's like, it'll be like a filter. The filter is going to come in and everybody who has the Holy Spirit in them is going to be lifted out of the earth. The earth is going to be filled with people who do not have the Holy Spirit in them at the point of the rapture. In 1 Thessalonians 4.17, it tells us that, it says that the, 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 the Lord himself will descend with a shout, from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. So the rapture is gonna happen and all of us are gonna be taken up out of, this, out of this world. Then there will be a lot of confusion. There'll be a lot of confusion in the world and people will be wondering, okay, where did they go? Where did they go? Where did they go? Conspiracy theories are gonna come up. Conspiracy uh, are gonna come up from left, right and center. People are gonna be saying, oh, the government has taken them. Oh, it's all sorts. But the the, the, the taking away of the church is going to be the formal um, opportunity announcement of the man called the Antichrist. And now we enter into the 70th week. Now, before we go into the 70th week, we want to look at this man of, and the, the man called the Antichrist. Let's look at 2 Thessalonians 2. It gives us some insight into this man a little bit of insight it says verse one now we beseech you brethren by the coming of our lord jesus christ and by our gathering together unto him that ye be not soon shaken to, in mind or be troubled neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us as that the day of christ is at hand now let no man deceive you by any means for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first and that man of sin be revealed. He's talking about the, the, the tribulation. Now, who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he as God sitteth in the temple of God. Now, he's referring to the Antichrist himself. Remember you not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what withholded that it might be revealed in his time. Verse 7, for the ministry of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. So we'll stop here. He's saying that, that right now in this church age, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. 
the Antichrist is already in operation. And we, the church, must realize that the work of the Antichrist is already in operation. The reason why the, the Antichrist has not, been, has not been manifested is that the person who, who is going to allow him to come in has not yet allowed him. He says, only he who now letteth him will let. So this, um, this letting, this letting that the Holy Spirit is going to give to the Antichrist is coming in the future. It's coming when the Holy Spirit lives with the believers. So now we look at things that are going on around us. We see um, the, the, the talk of um, a, a, a chip. We see things like the corona. We see things like um, the BVN. Uh, and while we're on the subject, I want us to be aware that uh, the mark of the beast is more likely to be a financial instrument. So people should not be so agitated about vaccine. Yes, it's good to be careful and cautious, but that's not likely to, to be a, mo a mode of buying and selling. Okay, the, the Bible is specific that the mark of the beast will be used for buying and selling. It will be a criteria. So um, if you don't have a BVN right now, they said you cannot do many things. There are many things you cannot do. You cannot access your account and all of that. So, but that's, that's a separate discussion. Now, we see the Bible says the ministry of, of iniquity does already, does already work. Okay? Does already work. So, in the system that we are in, the, minist the ministry of iniquity does already work. When we see things like TikTok, the app that, like TikTok, that can pinpoint the, the room in your house, this exact spot in your house that you are sitting in. When you, can, when you see things like Google that can tell you virtually, when you see things, when science tells you that they've in, installed um, rovers on all the planets so that no matter where anybody wants to run to, they will be able, able to find you. We see some of the mystery of iniquity already at work. The work of the Antichrist is already at work in, in the land. So the reason why he has not been unveiled is that he has not been permitted to. Now, how long is the church age? We don't know. But we know specifics about the Israelites, the Israelite calendar. God has always worked with the Israelite calendar in numbers, in numbers, okay? Before I go to numbers dealing with Israel, and before I enter into the, the 70th week, the, the 70th week, we'll come back to it, but the 70th week, at the end of the 70th week, there will be a culmination that is called the Armageddon. The Armageddon is going to be a massive war where Jesus Christ himself is going to come back and take control of that war. He's going to defeat the enemy and he's going to install a new kingdom. Praise the Lord. Now, when, when, when um, the, he's going to usher in the new millennium, so there's a mistake here. In between rapture and Armageddon, you should have the tribulation. And after Armageddon, you should have the millennium. Okay, so that's a mistake on my part. It's a, sorry, it's a small mistake. Sorry about that. But in between the rapture and Armageddon, you're going to have this tribulation. And then you're going to now have... All right, so now the, the great tribulation, which is supposed to be Daniel's 70th week, that deals with Israel specifically. Now, what is going to happen? There will be so much chaos in the, in the, in the world. There will be so much chaos everywhere. The, the world is going to be in doubt. People are going to be in fear. Imagine, imagine what is going to happen to stock market. Plane crashes. It's going, to, it's going to be incredible. There will be so much fear. Right now, with, with, with corona, it's been, um, it's been even mild. But imagine you know, a newscaster. You're, you're broadcasting the news and you're taking it to the sky. You suddenly disappear. They don't, they don't see you anymore. Imagine the pilot who's driving, who's right, flying a plane, suddenly disappears. Imagine so many things that are going to lead to chaos. Imagine presidents. So stock markets of countries are going to go down. You know, all sorts of chaos is going to happen at that time. That is when the man of sin is going to unveil himself. The man of sin is going to be somebody that has political power, okay? Now, this person that has political power is going to be supported by another being that has 
spiritual power. Revelation 13 tells us that. The man of sin will have political power. He will be able to convince countries, sell them solutions to the chaos that they are in. At that time, the nation, the physical nation Israel, is going to be under extreme threat of annihilation by the countries around them, by the countries of the world. Many countries are going to take a stand against the nation Israel. Now, when they take a stand against the nation Israel, it is at this time that the church is going to be taken up. Now, some of the pointers we, that are in the church age, can be looking out for is what is, going to, what is happening in the temple, the Jewish temple that is in, in the Temple Mount in Jerusalem. As soon as the Jews take full control of the Temple Mount, be prepared for some response. Be prepared for increased aggression. Be prepared for more hostilities coming from other nations. Now, if you are aware, if you've been following the news, there's something called the BDS movement. It is the boycott, divest, and sanction Israel movement. That is, they're trying to encourage countries not to boycott Israeli products, to divest themselves of Israeli assets, and to sanction Israel. So now, these hostilities are still going on at a diplomatic level, and Israel is still able to defend themselves. But there's going to come a time that those hostilities will reach a very fever pitch, high fever pitch. Now, the Antichrist, is going to come in because Israel is a very, very strong nation. They're not a nation that countries can easily play with. Israel is very, very, very strong. They're very well protected. They're very financially buoyant. So a lot of countries are going to be afraid to take the first step. That is when the Antichrist is going to come. And in chapter 9, verse 27, he says he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. This will be one of the great ploys of the Antichrist. There's going to be a peace treaty signed between Israel and the aggressive nations around them. There's going to be a peace treaty. And in that peace treaty, the, the temple will be given to Israel to manage. They, to, it, would, it would be like they have become the owners of, their, of the temple once again. They will not be dragging who, is going to, who owns it, who doesn't own it. There will be no such conflict. But in the midst of the week, in the midst of the week, the Bible says he will cause, he will break that covenant. This Antichrist is going to come and he will break that covenant and this will lead to the great tribulation. This is going to become, so the seven year period, we can actually call it the period of the great tribulation because there will be so much tribulation. Many people are going to die because they don't have food to eat. The, 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 now we are looking for palliatives. But at that time, even governments will be looking for palliatives. So then there will be so much tribulation going on in the land. There will be so much. Everybody, people are going to be sick. Hospitals are going to be overflow, uh, overflowing with patients. You know, it's going, to be, it's going to be a very terrible time. But the Bible is saying that at the, as soon as the Antichrist breaks the, the covenant, in, in, in verse 27, it says, in the midst of the week, Okay, in the midst of the week, that's, that's the seventh week. That is, that seventh week is the midst of the seven years. Okay, in the midst of the seven years, we will find out that the Antichrist is going to become aggressive against Israel. Now, at the point where the church is taken up, at the rapture, the Holy Spirit will stop um, working in people. The Holy Spirit, now the Holy Spirit is in us, okay? The Holy Spirit is in you. Christ is in you, the hope of glory. When the Holy Spirit is lifted up into the sky and it takes people up, the, the, the ministry of the Holy Spirit in people is going to see, okay? Now, verse 7 of chapter 2, verse Thessalonians, it tells us that the ministry of iniquity will only work until the Holy Spirit is taken out of the way. Now, the Holy Spirit will no longer indwell people at that time. But there will still be salvation going on, okay? Now, what is going to happen is this. Remember I told you to keep the word witnesses in mind. In Revelation chapter 7, if you can, quickly turn to Revelation chapter 7. We will see something interesting. Okay, in Revelation chapter 7, it says, And after these things, I saw four angels standing 
on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the sea and the earth. Okay? So this, this, this tribulation is going to be powered spiritually. There are going to be angels that are powering this, this, this tribulation that we're looking at. Okay? Now it says, verse 3, saying, hurt not the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their forehead. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of Israel. Now, remember that the Bible says that we have been sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So, there is going to come another seal. While the, while the, in, so, 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 so everyone that belongs to God bears a mark. Okay, everybody bears a mark. You belong to God, you bear a name. And the Holy Spirit in us is the seal, is the mark of God's inheritance, is the guarantee that we are going to make it in the rapture. But at the time when the, 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 the saints are taken out of the way, the church is taken out of the way, God is going to separate a people. Now, if you remember Romans 11, it says that there's, in verse 6, it says there's a remnant according to election. So then it is, so this remnant, God has separated them. These 144,000 Israelites now, if you read in verse 4 and verse 5 and 6, you know, down to verse about 8, it gives you the breakdown, 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, these 144,000 people are going to be God's witnesses on the earth at that time. They are the ones that are going to preach to the world. They're going to spread the gospel all over the world, 144,000 people. And these 144,000 people, they will, they, will, they will get people saved. They will tell people, you see what happened here. Remember when, when at, the, at, the, at the Pentecost, when, when Peter came out and was, they were asking him, what happened? You are looking drunk, you are looking that. He went into the past to start to explain what was going on. He started to tell them that this has, you remember this was said. This is that thing that was said. This is that thing that you guys read about. Now it has happened in your eyes. He says, before your very eyes, this thing is, is happening that has been said. Now, these witnesses are going to say the same thing. Remember, when these Christians were around, they were teaching. They were talking about the coming of the Lord, that Jesus Christ is coming back. That thing that you saw was not a science fiction. It was not the government that did it. It was not UFOs. It was Jesus Christ that came and took his people away from the earth. So these 144,000 Jews are going to be God's vessel in that time. But also, God is going to appoint a special two people who he, the Bible literally called them the two witnesses. In Revelation 11, we see where God talks about right, those people. I'm going okay. to collect mommy's papers. Okay. Um, Samarachi, can you mute, please? Okay. And oh, sorry about that. Chapter 11, it talks about the two witnesses. Verse 3, and I will give power unto my two witnesses. Now, listen. Understand this. Understand this part because it's important. This is the second half of the the tribulation period. He says, I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand two hundred and three score days. Now keep this in mind because we're going to come back to this. A thousand two hundred and sixty days clothed in sackcloth. These two witnesses are going to be located in Jerusalem, and they're going to minister to the whole world. And the Bible says that every eye will see, will see these two witnesses. Everybody in the world will see them. We know that this is possible through cable TV, through social media. This is going to be possible. He says, these are the two olive trees and the two candlesticks standing before the God of the earth. And if any man hurt them, fire proceeded out of their mouth and devoured their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. So these two witnesses are going to be untouchable. But the Bible says that they eventually will be killed but after a while, after three days, they will rise and be taken into the heavens. Okay? Praise the Lord. 
So their dead bodies, Bible says in verse 8, will lie in the streets of the great city where our Lord also was crucified. All right? He's given us certain specific information that these two witnesses, they will do this work for three and a half years, 1,260 days, they will do this work. And at the end of two, uh, 1,260 days or 42 months or three and a half years, they will be killed. They will be killed and their bodies will lay in the street. And everybody will see their bodies for three days and a half. And nobody will want to put them in the, to, to bury them. But all of a sudden, after three days and a half, the spirit of life will enter into them in verse 11. And these two witnesses are going to go back. Now, the combination of the two witnesses, the ministry work of the two witnesses, and the ministry work of the 144,000 Jews in Revelation 7, also mentioned in Revelation 14, these two, these two work will be God's evangelistic work in that period. And not, right now, you are having somebody from Cameroon preaching the gospel. I'm here. I'm from Nigeria. And I'm also from, from India. I'm preaching. And, you know, as I'm speaking here, there's somebody who's, who I know who is not a Nigerian who is on this, on this, uh, uh, on this call who is listening. Uh, some of us, are, you know, on our Facebook, on our Twitter, we're pushing out the word of God. In our, in our places of work, we're pushing out the word of God. This church age is the opportunity that we have. We are God's vessels to do that. That's what God has called us to do in this church age. But at the time of the Antichrist, when the Antichrist is unveiled, that is Daniel's 70th week. Now, Daniel's 70th week is going to give birth to a multitude of believers. Okay? It's going to give birth to a multitude. A lot of people are going to give their lives to Christ. And many of them, especially this, first of all, the 144,000 people are going to be beheaded. They're going to be killed. Maybe they're not, maybe not beheaded. They may be shot. Some of them may be stoned to death, whatever kind of punishment, but they will be killed. And even those, those who have believed God, they have believed the gospel, they have received the gospel, they have become tribulation saints. Praise God. So during the tribulation, God will still save people. Now, the devil is pushing a lie. I've been hearing that lie since I was a, I was a child, and it, at the time, I started to give it some thought. They say that if you, if you, um, if you miss the rapture, if a person misses the rapture, you will have the chance to, to make it. That you don't, you can, you, you won't take the mark. If you miss the rapture that they say, you, you can avoid taking the mark. Now, I'll push a question to us. This lockdown has been uh, not even up to three months. Yet, we've seen so, much, so many stories of looting, of killing, of, you know, all sorts. In fact, there was a story of a man, uh, an incident of a man, I think in Ekiti, who called NCDC on his son and said, my son, or oh, this one has just traveled from Lagos. You will find out that the Bible says, if you have run with horsemen, if, we, we, if you have walked with footmen and you are tired, how can you survive when you run against or run with horses? So when we think that the, the, this time of peace, it is not easy for us to, I mean, we, we, we can play. But at that time, when everything is going to be difficult. Now, imagine that you have been used to comfort. GSTV, you know, you go to the shop right, you, you, you eat, you know, in Chinese restaurants, you do all of that. Now, the financial system, remember we said that the, the, the mystery of iniquity is already at work. It's pushing us closer to a point where we will be cashless. And when you are cashless, all your information will become virtual. Now, once your financial information is virtual, it can be turned off at the top. Now, I'm not trying to, to, to scare anybody, but this is the mystery of iniquity at work. So we will find out that many people are going to, many accounts are going to be frozen. And the, 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 the way to get back your account will not be something that looks demonic. It will be, you need to register for this. In fact, we are, we are migrating everybody that is on this current CBN platform. We are migrating everybody to a new platform. 
that new platform will, will, will likely be hidden from uh, 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 general knowledge that it is a global platform. But all of a sudden, we will discover that they will sell global trade very fast, very easy. They will tell us that, you know, with this one now, you've had the previous system, you've had to wait for social working days. You know, they'll tell you that you've had to yeah, pay sort of some kinds of tax. But in this new system, it is seamless. It's going to, they're going to sell it as a financial instrument. They're going to sell the benefits. They're going to sell the, the same way the BVN was sold to us. And right now, it has, it, it has its positives in that, you know, fraud and all of that are being tracked. But imagine that a believer, a church, wants to do something and the church says, you, the government says you cannot do it. Because the government has your BVN, they can restrict your flow of funds. So the, the flip side of all of these things are going to be so, they look so mundane, but the enemy, that, and that is the strategy of the enemy, the devil is interested in making us not to, 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 to be aware, to catch us unawares. Praise God. And so in that time, the, 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 the 144,000 and the two witnesses, they are going to do the work of evangelism and many will be turned to righteousness. Many will believe in God and they are going to become believers. Okay? Now, I want to take a break here and turn back to the calendar, the Israel calendar. We talked about 490 years. Now, some research was done, which I want to share with us. If you look at this slide, can we see this slide? Can we see this slide? Yes. Okay, great, great. Now, we talked about 490 years, and you know, we started to, this research show was trying to ask, has God, are there any other cycles of 490 years? where things have been happening to the Israelite nation. Remember, the 490 years applies only to the nation of Israel, not to spiritual Israel, but to the nation. Okay? Now, we find out that we go back. If you go back, as far back as history will allow us, we can see some kind of, of, of pattern. We can see a kind of pattern in God dealing with the children of Israel. We start from Noah. Now, Noah lived purportedly around 2601 BC. And between Noah's time and Abraham's time, there is a, a time lapse of 490 years. Now, we know why, why this period is a bit sketchy is that Israel was not born before Abraham. So we don't really pay so much attention, but it is just worthy to note that that amount of time passed between Noah and Abraham, okay? But then the next epochal thing that happened in the, in the history of Israel after Abraham was the exodus from, from Egypt, okay? Now, between Abraham and the exodus, there was 505 years. Now, there's, there's, a, there's a lesson to be learned here. Now, Understand something. I'm not trying to calculate. I'm not trying to calculate when Jesus is coming. No, the, we, we are, that's not the that's not the goal of this. Nobody knows that day. Certainly, we can judge by seasons. Certainly, we can judge. The Bible says the times and the seasons you know. So we can look at the things that God has provided in the Bible, the pointers that God has provided in the Bible, and use that to know when the Lord is likely to return. But Nobody can know the specific day. That's why it says nobody can know. It comes like a thief in the night. All right? But what this is here is trying to, ex to examine the likelihood of this, um, this, this, this 490 cycle, year cycle. Okay? Now, God has always, God is, if, if you look through scripture, you will find out that the number seven is important to God. It's very, very important to God. And... Um, we started out with the first 490 years, which we're not dwelling on so much because Israel was not yet born then. But it is just worthy to note that that period of time passed between Noah and Abraham. But between Abraham and, and the Exodus from Egypt, we have 505 years. Okay? Now, they say that this is um, more than 490 years. But when you deduct the 14 or 15 years difference between Ishmael, and Isaac. This point is important because 
we need to, it, it's going to help us a bit in our understanding of the 70th week. We discovered that that 15 years, less from 505 years, is again, it gives us 490. Then we look at the next significant thing that happened in, the, in that period was the temple dedication. All right, we remember that the temple was, yes, David wanted to build the temple and, and God said, no, your son is going to build it. Now, um, the, 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 the Exodus happened in 1606 BC and the temple dedication happened in 1003 BC, 603 years in between. So how, what, what, what then accounts for the difference? Now we see that every time there is a departure from God's plan, God doesn't count that time period. God deducts that time period. Every time there's a departure from God's plan, so when God told Abraham, you are going to have a son, and Abraham went ahead to have a, a baby, another child through Hagar, 15 years passed, and God started to count from the doctor that 15 years. So now we look at the period of the exodus, between the exodus and the temple dedication. Now, the, 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 um, the book of Judges is very, it, it, it looks like a lot of stories. It looks like, you know, this, this is just a lot of accounts of wars and, and victories and losses. But it's interesting, the things that we can discover when we look at the word of God. In the book of Judges, we find that the Israelites were taken into captivity a number of times. Every time that they disobeyed God, God would permit another nation. God would permit another nation to take them captive. Every time that they disobeyed God, God would permit them to be overthrown by another nation. So in Judges chapter 3, verse 8, we see that the Israelites, and you might want to just write that down so you can check for yourself. In Judges 3, verse 8, the Israelites were, were slaves to Mesopotamia for eight years. Okay, so if you look here, I put the years in brackets to total 111 years. Eight years was the first one. The second one was 18 years, okay? They were slaves to the Moabites in Judges 3, verse 12 to 14. Then we have the Midianites for, uh, the Canaanites rather, for 20 years, they were, um, they, were, they were captured by the Canaanites, all right? Then they cried out to God and God rescued them and then they fell again and God permitted them in six, Judges 6 verse 1, God permitted the Midianites to, to capture them for another seven years. They were in captivity, all right? Then they prayed to God. And you remember um, this song in Daniel that we normally sing, uh, how can we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? These are some of the times that Israel, Israel was in captivity and they cried to God. And God heard them. And every time they would cry to God, God would rescue them. But then they would go back again. And then we see in um, chapter 10, verse 7 to 8, the Philistines, Philistines and the Ammonites took control of Israel, kept them in captivity for another 18 years. Wow. So after that period, they cried out to the Lord again, and God rescued them. All of this is before the temple was dedicated. And then finally, there was another 14 years in Judges chapter 13, verse 1, there was another 13 years, uh, 40 years that the Israelites were in captivity. The total of this is 111 years. Again, we see that that 11, 111 years is deducted from, if you deduct it from this, 100 and, uh, this, this, this period where the temple was dedicated, you will see that the time of God's covenant with, with the people, the time when they were in fellowship, when they were in right living with him, was 490 years thereabouts, 492 thereabouts, okay? Now, the temple was ded dedicated, it went into ruin, and King Artaxerxes then gave the edict in 445 BC. The distance between when the temple was dedicated and when the king gave the instruction for them to rebuild was 488 years. So we see this 490 being played with over the history of the Israelites. Now, we've seen four cycles of 490 years. The fifth one is the one that leads to the 70th week. The fifth, the fifth 490 year cycle is 
the one that we are focusing on now that leads to the 70th week. Praise the Lord. Now, the 70th week is at the end of this fifth one. Okay? Now, if you see what we've done here, what I did here, between the time of the edit, there's a line in the fifth year, in the fifth cycle. That fifth cycle is broken into two, according to Daniel chapter 9, verse 25 and 26. Now, 69 years is what, uh, uh, 69 weeks, rather, 483 years is what um, has transpired before that line. Okay? Now, that line, 483 years later, is what is the day, according to what has been calculated, this was actually calculated one by one, day by day. Some people took the time. I think the man's name, I wrote it down somewhere, is Sir Robert Anderson. You might look that up. Sir Robert Anderson counted the days between um, the edict in, in, in 445 BC and, um, and, and, the, the, and he counted 483 years later. Now, it's important to point out that in Bible times, the year was 360 days, and they made provision for leap year. The, Bible, the, the, the year was not 365 days like we have now. So the prophetic year is actually measured using 360 days. And it is with that 360 days that we are able to arrive at the 6th of... of uh, Sorry, I got that somewhere. Praise the Lord. It's, it's, it's 6th of April. 6th of April, right. So between, um, between March 14th, 445 BC, 483 years later, using 360-year days, we arrive at April 6th, 32 AD. Now, history gives us what happened on this day. This is the day of the triumphal entry of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. This is the day that Jesus Christ marched into Jerusalem as was prophesied. Your king comes to you lowly riding, a lowly and meek riding on a donkey. So this 490 years, it is at that period when the church age was ushered in. Okay, so now we're on the fifth cycle. The fifth cycle the fifth cycle is where we currently are. That line, that dark line you are seeing on this slide is where the church age currently is. That's where you and I currently are. That is where the word of God that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is where we are currently. We are sitting on that line. But God's calendar for Israel is not completed. God is going to continue. There's a seven-year gap that is still waiting, that's going, that God is going to finish his work. Remember in, in chapter, uh, chapter 9, verse 24 of, of chapter 25, rather, 24 of Daniel, he gives us seven things that are going to happen. So those seven things, God still intends to do it in Israel. Now let's look back at those seven things to see whether or not they're already existing so that we will know. He says that he wants to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation. Now, these are things that have already happened to the Gentile church. In the church age, we have already experienced these things. All right? He's going to bring in everlasting righteousness. We're already declared righteous by God. He's going to seal up the vision and the prophecy. He's going to anoint the most holy. But for Israel, the nation Israel, these things have not happened yet. Praise God. So we know that there's a seven-year period that is coming, and that seven-year period, to the glory of God, we would have gone. We would have left the earth. We would be with God. The Bible says that our mortality will be swallowed up by immortality. This physical body will give way to something far more glorious, something far more eternal. Something, you know, the Bible says that our, our present tribulation works in us a far more eternal and exceeding, far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. So. I'm so excited about that. I'm so excited. You know, the Bible says we are looking forward and hasting towards the coming of the Lord. So it's something for us to be excited about and to be joyful that we are not going to be part of the great tribulation. Praise the Lord. Understanding Daniel's 70th week 
answers the question of whether Christians will be part of the Great Tribulation. The Bible tells us that we will go before the Great Tribulation starts. All right, just to wrap up, we have a few more minutes to go, just to wrap up. So, because we're looking at cycles of sevens, we know that at the end of the Daniel 70th week, there will be five cycles left. Uh, there would have been five cycles gone. So what happens to the other two cycles? Now, if you look at the, the previous slide I shared, the millennium is here. The millennium is going to be a period of 1,000 years, and you can very easily fit in two 490-year cycles into that period, all right? Now, that is going to be the culmination when the church, both physical and spiritual, will be united and a people will rise up, a people of God. It is during this millennium that this heaven and this earth will pass away and then a new heaven and a new earth will be created. That time, there will be no more nations. There will be no more. We will be all one people, God's people. And at that time, by the, glory, by the grace of God, every one of us we will be spirit beings. We will be, we'll be spirit beings that live and breathe in God. We will be like God. We will be exactly like him. And that is the time that we will come back to the earth during the 1,000-year reign. And the Bible says that after that period, the new Jerusalem is going to come down out of heaven. It's a glorious thing for us to look forward to. It's a, it's a fantastic hope that we have. It's a glorious hope that we have that you know, we are going to, and, and it's important, it's, it's, it's so amazing that God thought of all of this all the way back from before creation. God ordained all of these things to happen so that at the end of it, you would have a people, a holy nation, one nation of people who are saved, born, righteous, free, clean, and pure, worshiping him for all of eternity. Praise God. So understanding Daniel 7, verse 3, is a way for us to appreciate how we are going to live our lives as we approach the end of the church age. Romans 13 says, it is high time that we awake out of sleep because our salvation is nearer than when we first believed. So even though we were saved, there is a salvation that is coming. The Bible calls it the redemption of the body. It's coming and it's time for every one of us to hold on fast. This is the time for us to, to stay, stay true to stick to what we have believed, to stick to what we have been, what we have been saved from. It's not a time for us to, to get and play and party and no. You see, the Bible says that you've been saying that Jesus Christ is coming, Jesus Christ is coming, Jesus, Jesus Christ is coming. But the promise that Jesus Christ will come like a thief in the night is only to the church age. It's only to us Gentiles. Praise God. So it is us that needs that understanding. We need to tighten our belt. We are the ones that the thief can come just like that. And when that happens, the, the good news about it is it's not nothing to be scared about. It's nothing for us to be worried about. We are not, you know, people talk about making the rapture. No, we are destined for it. That's where we are headed to. You know, the Bible says the Holy Spirit is a guarantee. It's a deposit of that which is to come. All right. So we, we are not afraid of missing the rapture. Nobody, no Christian should be afraid of missing the rapture. Once you understand who you are, and your walk in obedience to the Lord and to the leading of the Spirit in your heart. Praise God. I don't know if any of us have been blessed, but um, I'd like to open the floor. You can turn on your audios and you know, put in your questions. If you have any comments to add any um, before, before we close up, praise God. If you've been blessed, you know, let's know that you've been let's Just share a word with us. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, we really thank God for this. Uh, these are the lost messages in the body of Christ. I remember when we nearly gave God Sorry, please, can you introduce yourself? Uh, I'm Pastor Shay McCauley. I'm Shay McCauley. Great to have you, sir. Uh, I want to thank God and bless God for your life. This is a lost message in the body of Christ. When we first got born again in the, in the 80s, this is the kind of message that we used to hear that made us to get serious with our Christianity until we, when the prosperity messages came and we lost all of this uh, very powerful, deep teaching of the Word of God. 
And uh, if there's any message that is very important that we need to begin to hear now, I think it's this message. Mm -hmm. And the one thing that we encourage you is that whatever it will take, it's our cooperation with God, let's go with the first flight. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, very much, Pastor Carl. Thank you so God much. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Amen. Amen. Does anybody else want to uh, have any anything to add before we wrap up? Um, while we're waiting for that, I just want to encourage us. Uh, we will be having such such sessions um, intermittently. Today we're talking about prophecy, but um, the next class we're not going to be talking about prophecy. We're going to be delving into into some some other thing that the Lord will have us talk about. Um, I believe that it will be um, an opportunity for every one of us to to learn you know, to learn from each other, you know, and to, to, to grow in faith, to grow in understanding. Um, praise God. So I want us to look forward to, to that. I thank you very much for joining. I'm still waiting for anyone who has any comments. Um, I don't know, bro, even you had raised your hand. Um, you had also raised your hand. I don't know if you want to... Praise the Lord. All right. If we don't have any more uh, questions, can we um, can we just say a word of prayer as we as we close the? Okay, I can see. Okay, great. Praise God. Praise God. Father, we give you praise for today. We thank you for your word because your word brings light. Thank you because your word changes us. Thank you for the revelation of your word and insight. We give you praise because we know that your, your, your word is going to change us. It's going to cause us to become who you say we are. Thank you, Father, Lord, because we understand that we are not in doubt. We're not in fear of missing a rapture. We know that we are destined for that. The Holy Spirit in our hearts is a seal, is a stamp of authority telling us that as long as we have the Holy Spirit in us, the one that quickened, the body, quickened Jesus Christ and rose him from the dead, he will also quicken us. And, and transport us to your presence in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, because your word is teaching us to walk wisely, walk in righteousness and walk in wisdom. Thank you, Father, because, Lord, we're not of those that toss around and here and there looking for uh, 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 what to do, what to say, looking for doctrines here and there. We are grounded in truth. We're grounded in truth and we are subject to the spirit that teaches us. Father, we thank you. I also thank you, Father, for everyone who has joined this meeting. We ask, for oh God, that you be with them, protect them, in the, in the middle of this, in the middle of this uh, 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 coronavirus, continue to keep us. We thank you because none of us will fall prey to the attacks of the enemy. We'll be safe. Our loved ones are saved in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, Lord, for our leaders. We pray you give every one of them the wisdom to administer, administer your, your will, to lead the country aright in the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. Be exalted in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' Amen. precious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. God bless Amen. you. Have a good evening. Thanks for joining me. God bless you. Pastor Carl, let us have the recording. All right, sir. All right, sir. Yeah, so we can go and like the Berean Christian. Yes, sir. Please. All right, sir. Digest it. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. All right, sir. God bless you. I would love, I would love one too. Okay. Please I'll just tell me a WhatsApp message yeah. if you are interested. All right, thanks, Carl. All right, bye. Bye. Good night.